The next topic we're going to cover is urban prone and specifically the anomalies that we have to deal with with both weapon hand uh, going to our weapon side or reaction hand going to our reaction side and crisscrossing those two. And that's where things get a little bit, um, can be a little bit hard and challenging for some people. When we look at urban prone, to me, this is a tactical position. I can use it uh, behind cover and concealment. I could use it on an L-shaped hallway if I was working that corner. I can use it around vehicles. I can even modify it a little bit and get into a little bit more of a, a fetal position just to keep my body parts behind a vehicle tire. Uh, I could be, maybe you have a significant loved one that you're about to you know, present a very beautiful ring to and you're shopping at, say, Kmart when a shootout breaks. Uh, stuff could happen, right? I got to get my body parts behind that glass counter. I mean, technically, as far as I'm concerned, you're shopping at K's. It's, it's, it's the same. And technically, if it's your first wife, then it's probably a training wife anyway. So trust me on this one, guys, just, um, just experience, you know, good, bad, and different. Nevertheless, getting back to the actual topic, what we're looking at is anytime I'm going to the right with the gun in my hand, it's much easier because I can utilize the forearm and the shoulder to break my fall. To help facilitate that so I just don't roll over on it, I'll bring this leg back just a little bit, which lowers the body to the ground, and then I can kick out, and then I'll start shooting from here. This is basically like straight prone, but I'm just on my side. I mean, let's not make this more complicated than it needs to be. This would be straight prone, and then I would get up like this, and all this is is urban prone, and I'm getting up from this position right here, and I'm pushing off with the weapon and with the forearm. So, again, just one way in which to do it. Reaction hand going to the left side is going to slight, uh, differ slightly. And the reason being is, is because are you still standing when you do the engagement? So we're saying that we got shot. Am I still standing and doing the engagement and then lowering myself down to the ground? Because that's going to look the same as what we just did a second ago. It's just going to be in my left hand. Or are we immediately going to the ground and taking cover? So my point being is, is that I access the weapon and that I bring that left leg back to help facilitate my forearm getting to the ground, kick the legs out, roll the gun back over, and then bring the gun up into a good position in order to shoot. And then of course, getting back up, everything's in reverse get to my knees, I'm up here, and then I can get to a stand in position. So we do have a few options. It's really gonna differ of, are you standing and fighting for a few seconds and then going to the ground? If so, you just have your gun in your hand, not that big of a deal. But if I'm going to the ground anyways, then to me, instead of wasting time, again, like we had talked about um, in some other techniques, I don't wanna sit there and do a leg pinch with this thing when I know I'm going to the ground anyways. I would rather just get to the ground, get to safety first, and then just roll the gun, get it back up and shoot. All right, here's the weird one. It's when the gun is in my weapon hand and I'm actually going to the left. What I like to do is a couple things. One, I can utilize, <clears throat> and I also need to check the environment as well because I'm about to set the gun down just momentarily. Uh, I'm gonna utilize my three fingers to make contact with the ground and part of the slide. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that quick one-handed push up, but lower myself to the ground. And then from here, just bring the gun up and shoot. The awkwardness here is the getting up and down. Now, when I go to return and get up, there's a lack of strength happening here. So I could go to a forearm and relinquish control of the gun. But I told you in other episodes that I really don't like to let my gun out of my uh, hand at all. I like to maintain it and control it. So with that said, instead of just doing that push up to get to here and then to get to my knees, I'm gonna maintain control of the gun to where when I put it down, I'm gonna come up on my head like this and then I'm going to use the gun. My fingers are on the other side of it. I'm going to push off and then that way I get up with the gun in my hand. I don't care. At this point, I'm just going to use my head as leverage so I can still maintain control of this gun and keep it in my fire in hand. That way if something changes, I can be shooting with it.
All right, let's break down reaction hand. Again, the question is going to be, are you shooting with the gun in your hand as you go to lower yourselves down? Or are you coming in and just grounding the gun right here, getting into a good position, rolling it over, and then shooting? And then, of course, getting up is going to be the real issue. So to me, whether it's here or whether I'm in this position shooting, going to the ground, I'm just leveraging the ground and kicking out. The getting up is always the issue. So I bring the gun back up, I go to shoot, I go to get up, and either I go to forearm again, like we just mentioned, or I can get up to a hand from this position, or I get the gun and watch where the trigger guard is because I'm pressing it off the ground. And what I do is I just work my legs up to my head right here. And then I'm gonna push off to get to a kneeling position. And then of course, from a kneeling position, I'm good because now I've got mobility back. So to me, again, there's just some subtleties. These are workarounds. These are there. I know I don't have, normally I'm running this in a three-day class. So it's easy for people to find their way, their method, what works best uh, for you. I'm giving you some ways in which to do it, but the reality is our bodies are all going to differ. So what you're doing is going to differ slightly from me. Question is, can you get up? If you can get up, good. If you can get up with the gun in your hand, even better. So these are things that you can practice at home and try. Just you know, make sure you separate the ammo because pretty soon you're going to be backing up either one Adam 12, TJ Hooker, or, or, you know, Poncharello on chips. And last thing you want is to ND into your TV. So again, if you're going to do it, do it dry.